everyone. I'm Jacqueline from Pudgy Cat Games, and this year with me is Layla. She is our official Pudgy Cat. Thanks for joining. Um, today I'm going to be showing off a game that I am working on. We're going to play through the solo mode of The Clock Strikes Midnight, um, which will be a one to two player game that I will be entering in the Game Crafters Solo Duo Contest. Um, so without further ado, let's check it out and I'll teach you how to play. All right, so first up here, um, the tabletop simulator is set up for both multiplayer and for solo mode. So these items that are over here, you will not need for solo mode. Um, for solo mode, you will just need the 12 cards. These are extra cards that would be able to essentially be the backs of these cards once they're finalized. Um, they will not be used in this game. You only need three of them. Um, you're going to need the two dice. You're going to need these three little cubes. And then this will be your round tracker. The goal of the Clock Strikes Midnight is that you are Cinderella and your fairy godmother gave you a pocket watch so that way you can get home before the Clock Strikes Midnight and everything goes back to being not magical. However, the pocket watch that she gave you is broken, so you need to fix it in order to make it home in time. You have 24 hours, um, or essentially 24 turns, in order to complete the watch. Um, as matching Cinderella's color dress, this light blue up here, is going to be your color for solo mode. If you're playing in a multiplayer game, um, you would use the light color and the dark color, but for solo mode, you're just going to focus on the light color. The object of the game is to get all of the hand or all of the numbers into the position on the clock that you would like them in, starting with a 12 at the top. Uh, as you can see, there's a 12 here right now, but it's not the correct 12, so it will not count. Um, and so once that starts happening, you're going to be taking turns and you're going to be taking these different actions to either rotate or swap cards around to move them um, to try to get your numbers in the right spot. However, you are competing against the evil stepmother. The evil stepmother is an AI that I designed to model a second player. Um, interestingly enough, the Clock Strikes Midnight was actually originally designed as a multiplayer, um, as a solo game strictly. And it actually wound up adding a second player mode. So it was kind of interesting from the design's perspective to kind of go from strictly solo to solo plus a multiplayer mode. But I think the AI does a really good job of emulating what the second player would actually be doing. Um, so for all intents and purposes, this white dice here is going to be your stepmother dice. Um, on each turn, you're going to roll this and you will kind of see what the stepmother does. The, depending on the number that shows up, um, it will either cover one of these actions, do nothing, or allow you to take a bonus free action. So a three would go here, and it would block this action for that turn. So just so that way everyone is aware, this is number one, this is number two, number three, and number four. Five, like I said, would do nothing. You can also refer to over here if you are curious about uh, the stepmother dice specifically. And then six allows you to take a bonus action. So it essentially gives you two actions for the price of one. Um, each time you take one of these actions, you will increase this counter. If you complete it before you get to number 24, you win. Currently, we're working on a system to try to see kind of where the numbers typically will fall. Right now, it seems about 16 seems to be about the average number of turns it takes in order to complete um, a game. But I'm trying to work out a system, like a ranking system for kind of what's average, what's good, what's superior. Um, and that will come through some more play tests. Uh, this other die will actually likely be a two-sided coin. And one side will be clockwise, one side will be counterclockwise. And this card here will actually just say rotate a card. Depending on what this lands on, it would be rotate a card clockwise or rotate a card counterclockwise. So disregard the fact that this says rotate a card in any direction right now, as that will change. For now, odd numbers on the blue dice will be rotate clockwise, and even numbers will be rotate counterclockwise. Um, and then these little cubes, so the stepmother is going to be moving around kind of causing trouble. Um, however, you have your fairy godmother cubes that will allow you to kind of take some special actions. So on every turn, you are required to take an action, whether you want to or not. However, these little cubes will allow you to choose to not take an action at one point. So you essentially have three free passes because as you get towards the end of the game, you may find that you don't want to move a card and maybe you just wanted to rotate it and the stepmother blocked the rotate option. Um, the fairy godmother will kind of help you to work around that. Uh, but once you've used all three of your cubes up, that will be it. So make sure you use them wisely. And that's pretty much it. 
Um, we're going to get started now. I'm going to set the clock just so that way we can see how long a single game takes. Typically, it's somewhere between like 8 and 15 minutes. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. Um, also, this is the first time I'm ever trying to do something like this. So if there's suggestions that you have for how to improve it, by all means, please let me know. I would really like to get better at streaming the playthroughs as I do them. Thank you. All right. So we are ready to go. So first up, we are going to start by rolling the dice. And we're going to see where the stepmother lands. So right now, the stepmother is going to block our rotate action which would have been rotate clockwise, but we can't take that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking around the board to see kind of where my numbers fall. Um, it actually looks like this was one that was not mixed up, so we're going to backtrack and we're going to reset because this was still set from my multiplayer mode and there's a lot of numbers that are in the right spots already. Um, so when you are doing this, you are going to kind of start by putting all your cards together you're going to shuffle them up a bit. And in Tabletop Simulator, it doesn't give you the option to kind of shuffle your cards and have them rotate directions at the same time. So this next part's going to look a little bit funny. But in reality, in real life, when you're rotating the circle cards, you're kind of just going to move them back and forth. So that way they're, as you can see right now, all the blue is at the top. We obviously don't want that. In real life, when you're shuffling the cards, that wouldn't be the case. But we work with what we got. So I'm just going to kind of shuffle these around. We're going to see where they land. Um, I tend to just kind of map, like mix them up and then I'll show you my method oh, it's exactly, um, for how to adjust. All right, so now what we're gonna do is anything that's not in the right spot, we're just gonna rotate clockwise until we have a number on top. All right, so now our number we rolled was one, so we're still blocking that rotate action. So let's see what our where our numbers are. Right now, it doesn't look like any of our numbers are actually in a spot that we want them to be in, so we're going to be, need to do a lot of swapping. So right now, the other three options I have are to rotate or to swap two opposite cards, to swap two cards with an odd number on top, meaning whatever this number that's in kind of the 12 o'clock position on that individual card, I could swap those. Or to swap two cards with matching symbols. Um, so your symbols, you have Cinderella's dress, you have a shoe, and you have a pumpkin. There's four of each, um, so you can kind of swap those around as needed. So for me, this looks like a potentially good option because it would get my seven into the right spot. So I'm going to pick this up. Also, bear with me. For whatever reason, when I pick cards up, they tend to rotate a lot, so I do a little bit of adjusting on the fly. So that takes care of that action. Now I'm going to roll again. All right, so now our opposite cards are blocked. So we can still do odd on top, matching symbols, or a card in any direction. Um, well, not any direction. In this case, it's a card clockwise. So let's see what's happening here. So if I move a card with um, a matching symbol, I could get this four into the correct spot. So that might be a good choice. Um, so we're going to do that. All right, we're going to roll again for turn three. So this is really just a puzzle game um, where you're trying to beat your own best score right now um, and try to make sure that you are able to finish before the clock strikes midnight. Um, so for opposite cards, if I sw switch these two, I can get the 12 into a good spot. However, if I switch these two with matching symbols, they both have a dress, I can get both of those numbers into the correct spot. So that was a really nice layout for me. So we're going to do that. And as I play, I try to keep in the back of my mind um, to make sure to be rotating things as well, because you're going to find sometimes the rotate option winds up blocked, and that's not ideal, um, but particularly as you get toward the end of the game. So I'm going to do something kind of cool here. Um, with these matching symbols, besides just this matching symbols card, when you rotate something, if it's next to a symbol of the same um, like matching symbol, What's going to happen is just like a gear on a clock, if you look on here, our cards have gears on them too. So when you rotate something, say I'm rotating it clockwise, because right now we have a three, so it's clockwise. So this one's going to rotate clockwise. So my one is now on top. But just like any other gear, because it matches the gear that's next to it, this one's actually going to rotate counterclockwise. So we're going to do that. Now my six is also on top. We actually happen to have another shoe next to it. So now we're going to go back to clockwise. So my 10 is going to... Kind of move to not a less ideal spot, just a different one. 
And then my four, even though it's a shoe, because it's in the correct location at that moment, it will not change. As long as your um, number is in the correct spot, not just in the correct location, but it has to be on the top, um, it will not rotate because you've essentially locked that card in as this is in a good spot. I don't want to touch it. I'm not going to mess it up. But through that one action, we got two numbers flipped to the correct spot. And so that kind of only cost us one action, but we essentially got two actions out of it. So let's see what we get next. All right, five. So five means all of my actions are available. There's nothing uh, in particular that's going on. So with that in mind, I think I am going to see what we have over here. Let's see, two. I'm also trying to keep um, an eye on which ones have odd numbers on top already because it makes it easier to rotate them when they're in the correct place um, because that card with odd on top would allow me to do that. But for now, it looks like the rotating something, actually, we're going to do rotate counterclockwise here. And we're going to rotate this five. Actually, we're not because if I rotate this five, I'm going to need to rotate this two out of place. And I don't really want to do that just yet. So I'm going to just swap my opposites. Get that 12 into the spot I wanted to. All right, we're going to roll again. So five and five again. So as I can rotate this one, I'm going to consider doing that. However, it is harder for me to swap things that have an even number on top. So what I might actually do is at this point, I think we are going to mess with um, my pumpkin here, even though the two's on top, it's gonna be kind of hard for me to get it where I want it to be right now. So we are just going to rotate this one clockwise, which would send this one counterclockwise and it'll bring my five into the spot I actually want it to be in. Ignore the dice, I just forgot to just select them. All right, let's do this again. So another five and another counterclockwise. So again, everything's available. So I'm gonna actually do a swap for odd numbers on top. So your other card options are even numbers on top, adjacent cards, or um, same color on top. Um, so those are the different choices that you could potentially have for those um, six cards. We've been getting a lot of fives here. All right. Um, so in this case, let's see, I still need my two, my three, my six, and my nine and my 10. So where's my 10 at? It's over here. There's a seven. Okay, so we're gonna swap these ones with um, odd on top. So now my 10's at least in the correct location. Woo, we get a bonus action. So a six is gonna allow us to take two actions for the price of one. And our rotate is gonna be counterclockwise. So right now, this is a great swap for me. Um, they have matching symbols and it would get two of my numbers into their correct locations, even if one still needs to get rotated. So we're gonna put that there, put this here, we can fix that. That takes one of our two actions. And then for our other action, let's see, we still need to get these, this one rotated, this one rotated, and this one needs to swap with this one. Um, shoe, dress. Okay, so at this point, I think we're gonna just try to rotate things to get them in more ideal locations. Um, so we because I need kind of things with odd on top because none of these are directly across from each other. So opposite doesn't really help us. And symbols doesn't really help us either because this one needs to rotate. However, um, there's three different symbols that are left right now for us. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're going to just rotate this one counterclockwise. And as these are in, that one's in the right spot, that one's not gonna change. And that only costs us one action. Now our odd on top is gonna be off. 
which is kind of unfortunate for us because we were almost hoping to be able to swap those two. So let's look at a rotate. So rotating something clockwise. Um, this would be a good clockwise rotation for us. So we are going to do that. Again, ignore the dice. I just didn't select them. All right, four. So matching symbols is out. But now we can take our um, odd on top and do this. Now my six is at least in the right spot. Let me try to shift that back a little bit. All right, get back here. I learned about snap points when I was making this and it made this a lot easier. Let's roll them. Okay, so five and a six. So counterclockwise and so let's see. This one, so counterclockwise doesn't really help us because this really needs to be clockwise so we can get the um, specific one on top. However, it doesn't really hurt us to adjust this one to make it counterclockwise as it really isn't gonna matter. Um, but what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna do that so that we can play it safe and not waste one of our fairy godmother cubes if we don't need to. Oh, I said that the wrong way. All right, so odd on top and clockwise. So clockwise is good, it's what we were looking for. So we are gonna rotate this up, this one right there. As I said, we're getting closer to that 16, um, which seems to be the average. So let's see if we can beat that. All right, so opposite is out. And as you can see, I'm kind of covering them just so that way I don't forget which is which. Uh, but now we're gonna do our odd on top. So our nine is now in the right spot. And now we have one that needs to rotate clockwise and one that needs to rotate counterclockwise. All right, so we get a bonus action and we can rotate something um, clockwise. So we're gonna rotate this one. So our two is in the right spot. And as we don't actually want to use our bonus action because it's not helpful, but we have to take that second action. We're gonna cash in one of our fairy godmother cubes. And this way we can hopefully not have to waste a um, like unused move by moving things around that we don't want to do. All right, so again, we have this. And in this case, we have to rotate it clockwise, but we can actually use that same action twice. So we're gonna rotate clockwise, make that six over here, rotate clockwise once more, and we did it. And now if you look, it's 12, 1, 2. Oh, we're not done yet. I'm lying. We, our three is not in the right spot. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, so we're going to take one more turn here. And we're going to hope that that stays as a clockwise rotation. And all right. So that one's blocked. This is rotate clockwise. We're going to do that. And now... At 17 turns, everything is exactly where we want it to be. So 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, as you can see, our clock is back in order and we would have beat the game. Uh, at just about 13 minutes, just after 13 minutes is where we landed. Um, so we're going to be playing a lot more of this and hopefully streaming some of it so that way everybody can kind of see and follow along. Um, I'll be doing a video for two player mode as well. Um, but if you're interested in testing it out, please reach out and let me know. I'm absolutely looking for people to test it. I really need to try to see where that number falls for our scale. Um, so I hope to hear from you all soon and leave us your thoughts in the comments. Thanks everybody, have a great day, bye.